Welcome everyone. Today we're coming here from my home brewery and we're going to be doing a style that I have not done before. We're going to be doing a white stout for Easter and just for fun we're going to be infusing in some hot cross buns. Let's go. Today as you'll notice we're using my modified uh, G70 V1. Uh, we've already got the water up to temperature for our mash in and I'm just going to start adding the grains. Then we're going to break up some hot cross buns and throw them in as well. And because we're dealing with something that I don't normally throw into the mash, I've got some oat hulls on standby just in case it gets a bit too cloggy. We chose to add about 36 hot cross buns just because they come in multiples of 6 and 36 seemed like a good number. I haven't taken this into account in the recipe in terms of what the OG will be, uh, but we'll just see what it comes out at and if it's a little bit high for a sweet white stout, then we'll call it an imperial one. So I don't have a sparge water heater. This was mainly because I don't have space at my house to have a sparge water heater as well as my large unit. So there's two options that we can do from here. One is to go with the no sparge method, but there's a lot of videos out there on how to do no sparge brewing, so I'm not really gonna cover that today. A little bit of an old school method used for the mash, but I'm gonna use it here for my sparge water is an infusion method. I've taken a portion of my sparge water, I'm going to heat it up to the boil and then I'm going to top it up using cold water to bring that boiling temperature down to our sparge water temperature of 76 degrees. Now that my sparge water has uh, boiled, I'm now going to add both portions to my bucket to then take downstairs for the sparge. Okay, so about the recipe itself, what is a white stout? So a white stout is a stout in all things flavour, mouthfeel, but instead of being a dark beer and having people go, oh I don't like dark beer, this is about the colour of a golden ale or like an IPA sort of colour. How we do that is we remove the chocolate malts and the roast malts that we would typically use in the mash and instead we replace those flavors at different points in the brewing process. So I'm going to replace the roast malts with coffee beans that I'm going to steep in the fermenter. The chocolate notes I'm going to add in by allowing this beer to age on cacao nibs. And that way we can bring forward all of those flavors without the dark color. This is a bit of a mind bender, um, but it results in a really good beer. All right, the mash is finished. We're at a good gravity for, for post the mash. Now we're going to lift up into our sparge position and sparge with the water that we had prepared earlier. Um, the water has been sitting a little bit long, so it won't be quite at the temperature that we want, but there's a whole lot of studies out there that uh, having a slightly lower temperature in, mash, uh, in sparge water um, isn't going to cause any issues and especially for grandfather systems because while we're sparging we're ramping up to our pre-boil temperature anyway so that's going to really denature any enzymes that end up in the wort at the base of the boiler. All right, so we've finished, we're in the process of sparging now and I've just taken a sample um, just to have a look at the gravity. It's, we haven't finished the sparge, so it's not quite pre-boil gravity yet. Um, but just remarking on the color and clarity of where we are at now at the uh, end of the mash. 
Okay, so now we have finished the sparge, all the wort has drained into the bottom of the boiler and we're gonna get ready for the boil. Uh, there's just a singular hop addition in here and at the end of the boil, we're gonna add our lactose and some of our spices as well. So we're at the end of the boil now and I'm gonna add a couple more items. The first is the um, allspice. I've actually lowered the amount of allspice that I'm going to add because I tasted the wort and enough of the spice is transferred over from the hot cross buns that I wanted to keep it a little bit more subtle than it would have ended up. And then the next is some lactose, uh, which many of us already know, helps to create a sweet, creamy texture to the final beer, increases the final gravity uh, as being a non-fermentable sugar. So we'll go ahead and add those now. I am cooling and transferring using the large counterflow chiller um, directly into my fermenter. I can expect this to go into the fermenter at between five and 10 degrees above my ambient water temperature. So there we are at the end of our brew day, the wort is in the fermenter. The fermenter is just cooling down the wort a few more points down to about our fermentation temperature. Then we'll pitch our yeast and allow that to ferment for about a week. All right, now that the wort is in the fermenter, we're gonna now add the fermenter and also the tilt to the brew session. So we go to the brew session, go to our white chocolate stout. We go down now to add device. We can add the devices. I am using a G-Cast to relay the information from the tilt directly into the Grainfather app. We can now manage the fermentation profile so the GF30 will automatically go through the fermentation steps. And I can select the source and I can have the gravity automatically update itself in the brew session to update ABV. I can save that and it will start updating the graph with the information in the next five minutes or so. Great, so now we've done 10 days of fermentation. We're at the end of our fermentation. Um, and what I've added is I've added the cinnamon quill. I've added some cacao nibs, which have been aging on there for about five days now. And yesterday I added in about a cup worth of uh, coffee beans. And they're gonna add that bitter flavor to the beer to, to emulate what we would get with a dark beer. Uh, so I'm using CO2 to pressurize the top of the fermenter. I'm using a tube on the sample tube to transfer directly into my keg and I'm using a gas airlock on the top here and some water to create a bubble lock on the top here so that I know that beer is transferring into my keg. So the beer's been in the keg now for about a week and a half, carbonating on beer gas, that mixture of carbon dioxide and nitrogen that gives stouts that characteristic fluffy head. As you can see, the beer has turned out this beautiful golden orange color. It's lacking a little bit in clarity and that's because I didn't add any of any findings to this beer. I didn't know how it was gonna turn out, so I thought I'd just leave them out this time. If I were to rebrew this beer with or without the hot cross buns, I would add some finings just to give it some clarity, just to mess with people a little bit more. On the aroma, we get the cinnamon and also the allspice that we used on here and a bit of the sweetness from the hot cross buns and the lactose. And this carries on into the flavor. However, the hot cross buns have added a little bit of an oiliness, not in a diacetyl way, but in a little bit of weight that makes it a bit more full on the palate. Thanks for watching the video on this hot cross bun white stout. Please leave a comment below if you have any questions on the recipe or process. Also, if you'd like for us to brew something in particular in the future, we'd love to know. Cheers.